Hi, good morning, or it might be afternoon. My name is Lisa King. Welcome to King Worldwide via Periscope. We put our videos on YouTube, and we are here to help people have a better way of life. This is going to be another quick tip on living life victoriously through Jesus Christ, and it's about association. I apologize in advance for the board. We had a little situation yesterday. We'll fix it this weekend. But right now, this is what we got, and this is what we're going to do. So I'll be reading some scriptures. Just as the board says, bad company corrupts good character. With kids going back to school, parents going to be associated with different parents. Um, my awesome dad actually is the one that told me this the other day. He goes, I didn't even ask, and it just came out from the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, um, that why don't we talk about association? I said, why don't we talk about that Monday? He's like, why don't you talk about it to, on your periscope? So the Lord, of course, said he's right. Absolutely. So here are some scriptures that um, I'll read it out a little bit, but then you can go on your own study. And when I say association, it doesn't mean avoid everybody or anything like that, because we're here to fellowship and spend time with other people and be a blessing. Fellowship for me or association for me is when I spend more than five minutes with somebody. Um, I'm not saying like I've just run into someone at the store and we have a conversation. It's more than five minutes. I don't mean that. But fellowship and association, who we spend time with is what we become. And that can go for the same as what we keep our eyes on, what we read, what we listen to. So this is just some great scriptures that my dad even shared with me and I looked up as well and found some definitions. So 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good company apologize i think i spelled something wrong but that's true good evil communications corrupts good company so if you're speaking wrong then you are um corrupting everything about association you're corrupting everything about who you're with another one 1 corinthians 5 11 it says i'm going to make them really small is not to keep company with fornicators covetousness people idolaters people that get drunk, etc. And I'm not going to read this out loud as much because I want you to go to the scripture yourself and learn who the Lord says to keep company with and who not to keep company with. And again, that doesn't mean don't fellowship. I mean, that doesn't mean don't bless. That means you don't want to fellowship with and develop relationships with folks that have not learned how to live in God's operating system. Why? Because who we spend time with is it'll rub us, rub off on us. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. That's an easy one. That was one for me a long time. Um, do not be unequally yoked. It says with unbelievers, but if you read the scripture out, it also means don't spend time exchanging ideas and learning from someone who is not living by the gospel, is not living with agape love, and not living with God first on their mind. How about um, 2 Corinthians 3, 6? And that is talking more about who to spend time with. Proverbs twenty nineteen talk about don't associate with tail bearers and i think that means storytellers liars and i'm going to touch on the lying thing if you say you're going to call someone and you don't text them or let them know that something came up and you don't call them that is lying you might say you're being too legalistic listen to a few more if you say you're going to meet someone and you don't notify them that something came up and you can't meet them that's like lying so the world is very loose with their word today. You know, it was probably even 50 years ago, people made um, business deals with their word. What happened to that? Some people still do. I do. But the thing is, not everyone you want to trust because they can't even, they say they'll call you later. They don't. They don't even mean, they don't even know that they just lied. So let's all work on what we say is what we mean or let's just be our, keep our mouth shut just like my grandfather taught me can't say anything nice just don't say anything at all it's a great lesson all right a few more here um talking about making friends in proverbs 22 verses 24 and 25 and then proverbs 17 17 a friend loves at all times and there's a little bit more there so again just keep in mind that who we are around is if we we will start picking up what they think or how they think. And one last example, uh, when I was 25, I was dealing with food weight and food addiction. And my parents were so gracious, to try to do everything they could to help me. They didn't realize, neither did I, what was really going on. What happened is at 12 years old, I allowed the enemy to start changing my thoughts and my words. And, and the thoughts were that I wasn't good enough, that I 
uh, wasn't va valuable unless I was a certain size. And a pediatrician confirmed that I shouldn't be eating a certain way and should be exercising more. And that was just a liar speaking through him. So what that did is that I believed that and I started developing, taking those thoughts that weren't right and weren't true for me as, 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 um, like as the final truth. What happened is it just spiraled into many, many years of being um, very bound by food and by um, something I didn't understand. What I was trying to say is that I moved on to California because it was the only place that I knew I would be invisible. I was 250 pounds. And I know out there in LA is where I lived, Beverly Hills, that a lot of people just like to look a certain way, plastics and plastic surgery, and that's fine. But I knew no one would notice me at 250 pounds. And it was either that or end my life because I couldn't function. So fortunately, of course, I had praying parents. Prayers always work. You can intercede and pray for people, and the Holy Spirit can respond to that. And he can send people your way. So the point is, I got there and I started learning and God said, he helped me so much. The point of this message <laughs> was not about that story, but it was about that um, I was in LA. And even though God was delivering me from the food addiction, that was the process started. Other thought processes about not being good for your word or borrowing money is a business deal. Or, you know, it's okay not to get married. You can just sleep around. Uh, all these different liberal, in my opinion, very loose, different, just let's just say loose and not uh, just not having any boundaries and morals started infiltrating into my thought process. And I would go back in home every year. I was only there three years and I could see, uh, what, am I thinking something different? Yeah, I wanted to be free from a food addiction, but I didn't want everything else in my mind to go the other way when that got right. So the bottom line is I didn't even realize it. I was playing Christian CDs and tapes. I was listening to the word and thank God I did because I came back within two and a half years because of prayer of my parents and then just the Lord delivered me. But the whole point of the mess story about California was that if you get around and you don't even notice and you're not paying attention to your association, it will seep in you because it's a curse of Satan and he that's all he wants to do is, like my dad said, degrade your thought life, degrade your mind so that you can't even think straight. So anyway, I did not mean to be emotional on this message. It was simply about who you associate with, and it makes a difference. So have a great weekend.